How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and one of my favorite things to do to an STL file is to create a low poly version of it. This is an example of a file I downloaded off of Thingiverse. This is a scan of a plastic toy cat from user Benito Sanducci. And it's got a good amount of detail. You can clearly see the nose, the ears, the eyes, and it sort of looks like a pretty good representation of a cat. So let's take a look at the low poly version of it. This is that same model, but I've reduced the number of faces a lot. So you can see it's got this really cool geodesic sort of look to it, where it is the same model and it's got all the same features. So the same curved tail and everything. And this is actually a really easy process to go through. To reduce the number of faces from this to this is pretty straightforward. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a free and open source program called Blender to do it yourself. You ready? Let's dive right in. Okay, great, so here we are at the opening screen of Blender. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import the file that we wanna work on. So it's an STL, so come over to import.stl. And here's the file that I'm gonna work on, and it's yellowcat.stl. So we're gonna go ahead and click import. And if you still have your block here, just go ahead and click the delete button on your keyboard and that's gone. So here's our file. So this is the STL that we downloaded from Thingiverse. And as you can see, it is exactly as it would show up if we printed it out. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually do the decimation. So you get to do the fun part right away. So go ahead and click on the model and come over here to add modifier and now click on decimate. Now in ratio, that's gonna reduce the number of faces in the model. So it is really subjective how far you wanna go. Let's type in 0.4 and you can see it definitely made a difference but it still sort of looks high poly. Like it just looks like a very low res scan now. So let's go a little further, let's do 0.1. And you can see now we're kinda of getting somewhere. Now it's starting to look more like a low poly model. Let's go a little further and go 0.05. Cool, that's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna go with 0.04. So now we've reduced the number of faces to about 600. So we've really taken a lot of the detail out of this model and this looks pretty good. So now that we've done that, click apply. And now you're looking at your low poly model. Now the next step is we wanna optimize it for 3D printing. So we wanna go through and try and find any problem spots. So right away you can see from the ear, some of the faces didn't quite line up right and it looks like there's a little bit of a hole up here. So we're gonna go down here into edit mode and that gives us kind of a clear idea of what's going on. So press A to select and deselect everything and come down here to the bottom and click on face. And you can see there's a bunch of faces here that don't really need to be here. So we're gonna right click and hold down shift on all of those and then press delete. And we're gonna delete faces. So just kind of repeat that until that looks a little bit cleaner. Yeah, and so now we can see this looks a little bit closer to what we were hoping to get. So now we've made a hole in the model, and you can see that it looks like an actual hole. There is kind of a tear, so we want to close that up. Click on Edge Select, and again, we're just going to right click here, and press F, and that's going to draw a new face on. You can see that there's one face that's kind of hiding out under here, so we're going to get rid of that too. And then go back and repeat that. So we're going to do the same thing and select all of these edges, and then press F. And now we've closed it up, and it looks fine. That actually looks pretty good. And we're going to do the same thing, we're just going to go around the model and look for all of those points. Anything that looks a little bit off. You can see down here in the tail it looks like... There's a spot where you can see through the model here. So we're going to do the same thing. So I'm actually inside the model right now and you can see there's a lot here that needs to be deleted. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of these faces just to make sure that there's no overlapping surfaces.
We're also going to do vertex selection. So if you come down here and click on the vertex select, you can right click and bring the vertex out a little bit. And that'll also make it a bit more printable. And then we're going to do the same thing, close up all these edges. And now you can see we've made a pretty big hole in the side of this model. But we're just going to go back and do the same thing. And now it's all closed up. And depending on how much of a stickler you are, you can go through and any really tiny faces, you can delete those. And just do that same process of recreating the faces. Now in your settings, you want to make sure you have the 3D printing toolkit enabled. And you can come up here into user preferences, and go into add-ons, and just type in print and you'll see 3D print toolbox and just click and make sure that's turned on. And that's going to do some pretty cool stuff. So we can check to make sure the model's solid, which right now it is. And we're also going to check intersections. No intersecting faces. That's really good. It means we got them all earlier. And it can also check for overhangs. So it'll tell us what needs support. You can see that there's a spot here and then there's also a line here. So that means that we might have a duplicate face here. So we can just go ahead and delete that. Perfect. And now we're just gonna go through and close that up. And run that overhang check again. And now we're good. So the only overhang here is on the chip. And once you get to this point, you can spend a little bit of time working on the aesthetics of the model. So you can make some decisions as to how exactly you want it to print out. So I'm going to go around and look for any spots that look like they might need just a little bit of extra work, and I can go through and spend a little bit of time working on those. I know that the ears, for example, have a little bit of indentation on them, and I want to emphasize that a little bit, just to really kind of drive home the whole low poly cap feel. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay, cool. And like I said, once we're at this point, you're just about ready to export. So now what we can do is just right click and go back up to the menu and click export STL. And now we're ready to print. So here's the model in Lelsbot Kira. And like we saw, the only spot that needs support is that little bit under the chin. But other than that, this model is pretty much ready to go. So all we have to do is slice it up and print it out and we're good to go. Pretty cool, right? Once you get the hang of it, you can do it to pretty much any STL you download. Just follow those same steps to create a low poly version. I used this process on a scan of the original sculpture of the Venus de Milo, and it had a really cool effect with the robe, where it gave it this very angular sort of look. So you never really know what it's going to look like until you try it. If you make something low poly yourself, leave me a comment. I want to know how it turns out. You can find me on Twitter at Andrew A. Sink, and I'd love to see a picture of anything you made. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.